Hey, how's it going out there, everyone? Uh, thank you for hanging out. I appreciate it. Um, it yesterday was my birthday, and I see uh, all the well wishes. I really, really appreciate it. Everyone that wished me a happy birthday, thank you so much. And those that didn't, I, I love you just the same. Um, I had an amazing day yesterday on my birthday. I'm out here in Nashville and I got to shoot. Well, I've been really lucky. I've been uh, getting to interview and shoot really, I think what I think are really fun and cool videos with guys like um, Marcus King and uh, Daniel Donato, Guthrie Trap, and so many more, uh, uh, Grace Bowers. I've got all these cool videos coming out. But so yesterday I shot um, with an amazing musician, songwriter, and also legendary producer, Butch Walker, ladies and gentlemen. And uh, he was so cool and <clears throat> really, really enjoyed getting to hang out with him. And so that video will be coming out at some point in the future. I also shot a, a new interview video with an awesome guy named Rayland Baxter as well. Uh, so anyway, just having a great time, and thank you for the, the well wishes. Uh, I decided to talk about some rhythm guitar in this, in this live stream today. Um, I've also got my buddy Matt here in Nashville that's looking at the comments as well. So if you guys have any important questions that you need to try and ask me. I also have someone checking it out. Matt, how are you? All good, bro. You, you're good? You're All good? Happy birthdays. Thank you. Oh, yeah, yeah. Lots of happy birthdays. Thank you. I, I, I appreciate it. I'll take it. Yes. My birthday is 11-11, shared with Leonardo DiCaprio. So, happy birthday, Leo. Hope it's a good one, buddy. <laughs> birthday twin. Um, so I want to talk about one cool chord uh, that I think is versatile. If you take the C major chord, folks. And you make that a C7 chord by putting your pinky on that G string right there. It's actually a really nice uh, versatile chord that you can start moving around when you add that seven. Because with the C major chord, you have the open G string. So I can't just fully move it, and also the low E string will just avoid that. But look, if I if I scoot it up a half step, it's like a D sus4 kind of thing, you know, because you have that open G string in there. But if I add my pinky, it's now a dominant seven chord. So if I move that up to where it becomes E dominant seven, which would be where my ring finger's on the seventh fret of the A string. Thanks for the birthday wishes. And Josh Norco, thanks for the super chat. Uh, also, you guys can hear me well, I think. Yeah? Sound is good to today. Sound and visuals are good today. Um, okay, so... Seems like it. Usually people are very vocal about something not looking or sounding good, so I'll take that as a yes. Okay, so, so when you play it for E7, for instance, you can hit the open E in there. You can also let the high E ring out as well. So that is an E7 chord, which could go right along with, you know, an, an E blues groove. It's also CCR. Uh, uh, let's see.
So then you could move that over to A7. I know that was like a CCR vibe, but if I just went and moved it up for A7. Back to E7. B7. I took away the high E with the other, with the A7 and the B7, but they do work actually. Just not great. It's a little too shimmery, too much. So I don't. But the others are in there. So let me go back to the E7 for that shape. What's great about that is that you have another type of E7 and part of rhythm playing, you can play uh, different voicings of the same chord. So I also have this A major shape right here, but making it like an A7 shape. So that's barred across the seventh fret and then ring finger is on the ninth fret D and pinkies on ninth fret B. So that's a different kind of E7. Check it out, I'll, I'll start on a loop with the rhythm, then I'll do a little E bass line on the guitar, then I'll mix between this E7 here and this E7 here, combining together. So let's try that. And when you're working on, when you're working on a looper and you're just like, just beginning out with a looper, It's kind of fun to do the a, a, a clean rhythm loop first without worrying about the uh, the chords. So here's what I mean by that. I haven't started the loop yet. Here I go. This is live, Carl McSandwich. Um, so now that is just a rhythm. So I hit record and I'm going to overdub an open E or an E groove. Here we go. All right, so that was the groove. There is the percussive, then I did a little single note E bass. So then I'm going to combine the E7 here and this other E7, which is that C7 shape. So I'm using the A7 shape here and I'm doing the C7 shape here, but both for E7. And so when I combine them together, I now have, uh, you know, musical movement within just a one chord groove. So check it out. So here's another E7, just playing this E major bar chord, like an A major shape, and then adding the seventh on the 10th fret high E. is that if you just went to the four chord, those three voicings now work in that position. So if I went up to A7,
Yeah, so you can uh, build voicings even within one chord. You can do it with you can do it with non-dominant seven chords as well, like for instance, just a regular old C major chord. The more voicings you know of the same chord, the more movement you can have within your playing. Uh, so let's see. Uh, C major. And each chord you go to, the more voicings of each chord, then it becomes more interesting. A minor. good questions here. Uh, Ricardo Vincente says, what exactly is a voicing? Is it about including or not an extra root note? A voicing is how you're lining up the notes of a chord, right? So if a, 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 a C major chord is just a C note, an E note, and a G note. The voicing is what combination of C, E's, and G's are you stacking in what order? They're all still C, G's, and E's that make up a C major chord, but how you're lining up the harmonization of those chords is what the voicing is. What chord is sadder, A minor or D minor? Well, it's D minor because Spinal Tap said so. It's as simple as that. Hey, Jeffrey, Atacora, good to see you, my friend. Um, uno qualunque, uh, sorry for the bad pronunciation. Uh, you're asking about playing Nirvana a strat with tremolo or fixed bridge better. Thank you. Um, he didn't use much tremolo. I don't think. Well, he did sometimes. Really, I'd say the main thing is with the tremolo, if you're playing really hard and you break a string, the guitar is going to go out of tune more than a, than a locked bridge. That would probably be the main, the main thing there. If I could make my own branded pe pedal, which type of pedal would it be? Carl McSandwich says that. So that could be maybe a question to, to other people because I actually have my own pedals. I've got the Schwarzenegger Overdrive, which is right here. <laughs> have my own pedals so dream come true wish come true dream fulfilled um marty where do you buy your famous hats <laughs> this is uh i get a lot of hats from brixton and some shirts too they're a san diego company but this one is uh this one's a new one, I can't remember right now. Anyway, none of it's like sponsored. I just do just buy them myself. Um, just looking at your comments. The hat's gonna keep getting bigger. <laughs> this hat's bigger. <laughs> Makes my head look smaller, right? That's what they tell me. Uh, <laughs> um, or my head got bigger, right? My head got bigger, so I need a bigger hat. But um, boom. Uh, I like Izzy Stradlin, yeah. 
he wrote some of the best uh, Guns N' Roses songs. The hat definitely affects the tone. Thank you. I appreciate the comments. All right, some shout outs. Scram Junks, uh, Philip on YouTube, Joe Pickup on Facebook, Jeffrey Sonnenshine, Thomas Brock, Rajesh Goomber. What's the best way to learn rhythm guitar? Even if you're like a very beginner, play your right hand rhythm to like music that you like listening to because it's all about that right hand. I'm just muting with my left right now. Uh, Jeffrey is asking why I like the 335. Well, when I first like got really into guitar in the 90s, I, uh, I liked the band Fish a lot. And they had a, he had a hollow body, so that kind of made me pay attention to them. Um, but what I like is with that neck pickup, you can get a woody, a kind of a woodier, warmer sound than a, than a normal Les Paul. bridge pickup you've got that same rockability of a Les Paul and then also the semi hollowness of a 335 when you're cranked really loud you can get some of that good sustain and feedback which you wouldn't get as well so <laughs> So like Back to the Future, that he, he's playing a red. It's not actually a 335, it's like a 355 maybe. More or less, it's the same guitar in Back to the Future. And so I put that together as well. Um, yeah, and it vibrates against your body better uh, because of the hollowness too. So there's some definitely something to that. Um, And uh, let's see, improv on scales real quick. Yeah, if you took the A minor pentatonic, yo Cody Hicks, A minor pentatonic. Um, let's just look at the D string. It's the fifth fret and seventh fret on the D string. You can improvise with that two note scale right there. Check it out. It's not quite as exciting as five notes, but you can start with two notes. Um, let's see here. Oh. Those two notes, here we go.
so I said, the first thing I said there, A minor pentatonic, blah, 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 blah. So then I picked something that was in A, the same key. You know, if I was uh, jamming on a G guitar, or I mean, a, you know, a G chord. I'm not gonna play that same spot. I'm gonna move it into the proper key. But you said, show me improvising with scales real quick. <laughs> so that was the real quick version. Um, Noah Sutton said, how did I start out? I liked music, had some friends that played guitar and they started showing me real easy little things. And I just stacked tiny little ideas and concepts over many, many years and got a knack for it. So practiced more because it was, I enjoyed it and I just got super uh, passionate about it. Uh, well, thanks. Oh, thanks for all the nice comments. Um, Yeah, there's all yeah, there's more to the story, but all is good. Um, Matthew Walker, Slugs of Amnesia, the frying pan scale. I don't know that one. <laughs> Sounds interesting. Um, this is a standard 335, but you know, only from. Actually, I should look up when the video came out where I'm in the factory. I I, I feel like it's four, three or four years, maybe like more like four or five years. Um, Uno Quadonke, I did answer your question. You're saying Nirvana is a Strat tremolo or fixed bridge better. I answered that. Were you watching? Because you keep asking the question. I answered the question. Um, it's really not going to matter. Oh, Martin Molinari says, do I have my own band? I've played in a lot of bands, especially before YouTube. I've toured in bands. I've played as a sideman. And then I've also been in bands where I was like, you know, one of the full-time members of the band. Bunch of that. But I'm not doing too much of that um, because of just my priorities are reaching you guys. So doing a band takes a lot of time and work. So I'm more into doing this kind of stuff. But I do want to throw out real quick uh, on the 15th, so in three days, it's Wednesday, uh, Wednesday right, Matt? Is it Wednesday? Uh, the Gibson Tuesday. thing? Tuesday. Tuesday. Thank you. I can't count well. So this Tuesday at the Gibson Garage in Nashville, Tennessee, at 3 o'clock in Nashville at the Gibson Garage, I'm doing a, a free event that's open to the public. Anyone can come, and you can either come up and play a little jam with me, or you can learn something right there on stage with me um or you can just come watch other people do that as well but it's completely open to the public this tuesday um and i know that's like late notice right but we're gonna do one in january so that's a much later notice we don't know the exact date in january or do we have one picked out matt okay so at some point in january um i'm gonna be doing another just free event in Nashville. So Nashville is a great music destination for a vacation. If you don't live nearby, you can come and see a million different amazing things, eat food that's amazing, see live music and talent everywhere you step. And then also come by and learn something from me on November 15th or then again in January. So if you're on my mailing list, my newsletter at martymusic.com, I'll notify you guys. I'll let you know about uh, that January date at the Gibson Garage. Um, so that's it, you guys. That was a good one. Uno. Either guitar will work for Nirvana. If you have a fixed bridge and your string breaks, your guitar will stay in tune better. If you have a tremolo and you break a string, the guitar is gonna be very out of tune. So that's the main difference. But sound-wise, the chords are gonna sound the same. Hope that helped. I know you're, you just generally are trying to learn. So I'm trying to help. Uh, well, that's it for now. Thank you, Matt, again. Or did I, were there any questions, important questions? A lot of people are wondering about the loopers. What pedal? Is what looper pedal? The looper pedals I would recommend, I did have my own looper, but they're sold out and I'm not gonna 
do anymore. So that was a limited run. But uh, I think Boss makes a really, really solid looper. And they have the one stomp looper. So I have one of those. But then they also have, you know, a two pedal, you know, a two pedal looper. And then they have, you know, like a 10 pedal looper, like um, Ed Sheeran style or whatever. Um, I would recommend you could get the one stomp pedal, which is not is the cheapest one, and then get an extension pedal to, to, to stop and start your loops. Um, I'm mainly using the looper. I'm mainly using the looper that's the two, two channel thing. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, teardrop picks or triangular picks? I think mine are actually in between, but they're a little more triangular. Uh, any other questions over there, Matt, that I missed, like from earlier? We're okay, we're good. All right, you guys, so we'll see you again real soon. Thanks for hanging out uh, this Tuesday at the Gibson Garage free events. And then in January as well, martymusic.com, courses, newsletter, subscription you know, subscribe to the channel on YouTube. Thank you again. All right, we're gonna sign off. I don't have a sign off uh, catchphrase, so we'll just see you later. I think my opening catchphrase is strong enough.